Welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Alex Colon and this is Dan Costa. Today we're going to talk about the top three news stories of the day, answer one of your questions, and show you something cool from the PC Mag Labs. So let's kick it off with the first news story, which is um, it's about the Supreme Court. They're considering the legality of warrantless cell phone searches. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's actually it's a huge, huge deal. So right now, a lot of people don't realize this. If you're arrested for any reason, the police can instantly search your cell phone. They've got software that does it. Don't think that your pin's going to protect you. And they can search your cell phone and find out, look at all your emails, look at your text messages, look at your GPS locations and your GPS history. All of that is legal without a warrant. So there's two cases in front of the Supreme Court right now. The, judge, the justices are, are evaluating whether this makes sense. Um, they, you know, the police can open up your wallet, they can look at all the pictures that are in your wallet, but is it appropriate for them to be able to look at every photo that you've taken in the last two years that happens to be stored on your phone, even if you were arrested for something that's totally incidental? It could be you know, not wearing your seatbelt or jaywalking. The police have the right to do this, and I, I think the justices are gonna come down on the right side on this. Um, I mean, I imagine they're not going to go into your phone if you were just crossing the road. But like you said, I mean, if, if you are arrested, they can just go through your wallet and see everything that's in there. So is there that much of a difference between going through the phone? They're supposed to. The, 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 the state is trying to make the case that this is a safety issue, that the police need, this, need to be able to do this in order to protect the safety of the citizens, in order to protect their own safety, in order to protect the integrity of the evidence so that the phone doesn't get erased by the user. But I mean, I think if the phone is in, the poli in police custody, it doesn't take that long to get a warrant. And the, no, nothing's gonna happen to the phone while it's in custody. I think they've gotta come down on the side and say, you know what, there's a difference between a smartphone, which is like searching somebody's home computer. Like no one would say that the police are allowed to search your home computer without a right. warrant. So this is really no different. It's a computer in your pocket. All right, well, and I, actually that kind of moves into our second story, which is also a uh, security issue, which is that Google will no longer scan student emails. Yeah, this was a big issue. You know, I didn't realize just how many people were using Google Apps for education. 30 million students, educators, and teachers are using the tool. And although they weren't being served ads inside the application, Google was still collecting information on them, still profiling them so that theoretically it could be serving ads on other sites using the information collected in the tool. They're now going to stop that. They're going to wall this off and say this is an ad-free environment. I think it's the right decision. I think so too, and actually they're, they're going to be doing it for a few other services, right? It's for uh, the Gmail for the government and uh, businesses? Yeah, I mean it's basically, this is not, you know, Google makes almost all of its money in advertising, so this is a huge step for them and a huge sacrifice, but there are some places where advertising just doesn't make sense. And I think getting a piece of that uh, education market is a lot more important to them than making money on advertising. The uh, software education market is an $8 billion annual market, so it's not a small number. And this is going to put them on a lot more equal footing with Microsoft, who's really been dinging them, or should I say binging them, <laughs> over this. Uh, plus, there are plenty of other people who use Gmail that they can uh, just read their emails. Yeah, that's true. They're not, <laughs> they're not, they'll, they'll get you another way. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, let's go into our new, uh, third story, which is, um, actually it was, it was only a matter of time before this happened, drone vertising yeah. is about to take place. Yeah, I couldn't believe this when I read this. It, I mean, it, it makes, I guess it makes a certain type of sense, but there's a startup in Philadelphia who is using drones to carry banner advertising. When I say banner advertising, I mean six foot, uh, six foot banners that are hanging off of drones. You can rent a drone for $100 a day. It will float around about 25 feet off the ground and carry these advertising messages. And remarkably, they, he's already sold, he already has four clients that are buying the service in Philadelphia. So if you're walking the streets of Philadelphia, don't be surprised if you see a drone dragging a banner behind it. I, is this even legal though? I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it is. And it, the FAA has, has basically precluded the use of drones for commercial purposes. This would be a commercial purpose. It would seem to me that this is pretty clearly not allowed under the current standards. And I, for good reason. I mean, I don't think there's any oversight. There's, there's no thought given to the safety concerns, what happens, who's piloting these drones. Um, so I think that they're gonna run into some legal trouble here. So I guess we'll, we'll just have to watch and see what happens. Um, so let's move into our reader question, and it comes from Steven who asks, I'm getting a new TV. Will buying an expensive HDMI cable really improve the quality of my picture? In a word, no. <laughs> in a word, no. They're Go cheap. This is, this is one of the biggest scams in all of consumer electronics. It's been going on for years. We've been writing this story. We first covered this story four years ago. Yeah. When, uh, you know, there's, there, you can buy an HDMI cable for $350 or you can buy a HDMI cable for $3.50, and they will both give you pretty much the same picture. Under six feet, 
exactly the same picture. We couldn't find any differences between these two cables. And th those five cables, they, yeah. they, like, we ran the gamut on them and they were all gave the same quality. Yeah, cables are cables. The, the important thing is you're gonna wanna make sure your cable is HDMI 1.4 compliant. Um, if, if you are 1.4 compliant, it, it will carry the signal, it will look great, and you do not need to pay more than $10. You will probably pay more on shipping and handling for that cable than you will on the actual cable. Yeah, so just go online, find a generic cable, and go with that, and you'll be fine. Yeah, I go on Amazon. Amazon's got great selection and great number of cables. Um, that's where I get them. And then, you know, because I'm a Prime member, I don't even have to pay for shipping and handling. And now it's time to show you one cool thing from the PCMag Labs, which is another thing you don't need to spend a lot of money for. The iSmart Alarm is a DIY home alarm kit. Right now, this is the premium package. It's $350, and it basically gives you everything you need to set up an alarm system throughout your home. And it's, it's modular, so you can add pieces to it. It's got the camera, obviously. Yes. But you can, you can then add new pieces for every room. Yeah, if it doesn't come with enough sensors, um, you can buy additional ones. They're about $30 a piece. Um, it basically comes with enough to do like the first floor of a home right now. So if you have a bigger home, you can buy additional ones. But it comes with motion sensors. It comes with door and window sensors. Um, the premium package has a camera, which allows you to monitor it from an app. It, it doesn't record video, but it allows you to take photos. Um, there should be cloud recording coming in the future. So that's a, you that's a cool feature. don't need video. If, you, it'll, it'll, if it detects the motion and it captures the intruder and sends you an alert, right. you don't need a full video of them necessarily, unless you're, you know, for a home solution anyway. Right. And then uh, another cool thing, it comes with these remotes. Um, these let you control it throughout the house. But it also, when you're carrying it, it logs if you come and go. So you can kind of see you know, who's entered the house and when. Yeah. Um, it's just it's a really cool system, and it's much cheaper than paying someone else to install an alarm system in your home. So for $350, uh, we gave it four stars in Editor's Choice, and you can read the review on PC Mag. Yeah, also great if you've got kids that are coming home after school. You'll know when they get home. You'll be able to check in on them. It's just a, it's a great, uh, great security tool, great yeah, security definitely. solution. Um, so that was our cool thing for the day. Check us out again tomorrow.